Hello homeschoolers, welcome to the Land of Kak Yak. My name is Laurel. So I have been working on um, something for my RC homeschoolers specifically, and I'm just gonna give you a quick flip through of the unofficial RC notebook level one. Okay, so this one's already printed out, of course. It has 12 weeks worth of daily pages for six day a week, weeks of course. Okay, so like Art says, starting with math, right? So they opened it up, they put their date, and they could work their math lesson here. I am thinking this is like very early. I'm thinking like first grade-ish. Maybe even use this in kindergarten. Phonics squares, reading, um, or copy work illustrations. So I'm assuming at this age that you are giving your kids some reading instruction. So how I would use this, I'd say I'm using you know, the McGuffey's for our reading lessons. This is the primer, but you know, you might be using alpha phonics or something else, a hundred easy lessons, something like that. I like that the McGuffey's, they have a sequential progression where they are explicitly teaching phonics. So level one, we're teaching them A, the short A, A, hard C, K, D for D, N, R, and so you could have them, you could have them practice. You could do that in highlighter and have them trace it. You could have them, you know, just write out just for review. You could do things like where you are reading the sounds from the book and then they are writing them in as they hear them. So you can check to see if they have that sound to symbol association down on their own. So it's really, it's just try and leave it open-ended however you would like that to go. And then reading slash copywork illustration. So I'm assuming this is how I would use it, right? That we would have read the lesson. This one's really short. It's like a cat and a rat, a rat and a cat. They could draw their pictures here from their reading and they could do their copy work here on this side, right? So I might write um, up here, McGuffey Primer lesson one. This is just in its We'll say one, one, 24. And then if they can write on their own, but you know, I like to use the highlighter method of copy work, especially when we are teaching um, reading lessons and so, and writing lessons. So I maybe would just have them, I would probably just start out having them do the words up here. You know, they could practice. I like the trace one, write one, trace one, write one, <laughs> trace one, write one. Then as they move up, you know, you can have them do whole words and, and then they're going to write and, 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 whatever, until they're doing whole sentences. A cat and a rat, a cat and a rat, right? Just whatever, however you feel, whatever you feel like they need to focus on. You know, sometimes if they're having, you know, a hard time with something like, let's say there's the word cat, then I may also have them practice mat, bat, fat, sat, you know, you get the idea, right? And then have them you know, write it. You see me doing this a lot in my copy book. So this, this might be, you could start with this. Or if you are using my copy books, this might be the first one out of the copy books that you used if you were going from my copy books, bridging into RC. I right, see so that's just an example. Of course, these get much longer, right? Throughout the primer. So I don't know, you might even, you know, while you're working in this, you might even transition into, you might still be using the lined paper. Um, you might even transition into the next our unofficial RC notebook. Oh yeah, and then they could draw their cat or whatever, right? My cat is angry. I don't know. You get the idea. 
All right, so then they would turn the page and you could do spelling or, or vocabulary, right? If they're already into their RC books, you can be doing using the vocabulary words from RC in here. You know, I like to do spelling at this age over vocabulary. I just kind of use our spelling words as our vocabulary words. So of course you could always use, if you're using something like this, you could use the words that are right in your book, right? Those could be your spelling or vocabulary words, or you could use something else. But you, I just left these spaces. These are for like, you know, you can write the words in there. I was doing something fun today with Bo, just in case you're interested, where I was doing something like this. So I would say like, these were our words over here. And I'd say, okay, I'd say this word is holds. It's holds, right? It's on our, in our list. Can you write in the missing sound? And he's doing that. So you could do lots of stuff like that, or you could do, you could dictate to them. Just you could literally tell them how to spell words like two. It's spelled T O, right? Two. You could use this for words like I say if you wanted to talk about blind, right? Maybe you're talking about this glued sound right here, right? And this is a blend. But let's say you want to teach them that it means you can't see. Right, so you might have them draw a picture of that man who can't see. He's got his like little hat on or whatever. <laughs> but he has to walk. He has a walking stick. Or he has a little stick to hold on to, right? But he's got his walking his stick, and then he's got to hold hands with the little girl, right? So he's helping him. It's Mary. She's like, we're gonna go over here and look at these ducks. <laughs> Feed them. Right, so they could draw something to show that somebody can't see or whatever. However you wanna use this, really, just, this is here in case they were at a place where you could put it into a sentence. Like this old man cannot see, he is, you could have them write in blind, something like that. He cannot see. These are, this is called parallel sentences, right? He is blind, right? And then maybe they can write in blind because they know what that means. Right? You, you could have words up here, a couple words that they know the meaning to. And you could put a couple fill-in sentences or something like that. Or they could copy some sentences. Or you could have them, you could say, Mary holds him by the hand. You could have them write a parallel sentence to, like, to that. Or just even orally just talk about it. She took his hand in hers. That's literally what hold means, right? Anyways, up to you. I'd probably just do something where I focused on phonics. And then this page is for the RC book. So whatever your RC book is, let's say it's like, let's take a really nice early one, Tale of Jolly Robin. And let's say you just read chapter one. Right, don't forget to. All right, and then you were using this for science. Say so you're required to teach science in first grade or kindergarten, like I am. And then just have them draw a picture or something from chapter one. And you know, if they aren't able to read the book on their own, which um, my kid couldn't in first grade, <laughs> just read the read them chapter one, have them draw a picture of it, either like while you're reading it to them or afterwards, and then you just have them, you know, narrate it back to you just like orally, because their writing skills aren't up to it yet, you know just say, okay, can you tell me what the story was about? What happened first, then, and last. So have them give you an oral narration back. I don't ever worry. I know I've seen some channels and stuff where people are, are having their kids do oral narrations and they're like writing it all out. I did that with Bo today actually in his copy book because he didn't want to draw. He was just tired. He was over it. And I said, okay, you just have to like you know, if you just tell me, if you narrate back to me what happened in the chapter today, we're reading Winnie the Pooh, I'll just write it down for you. And so, I mean, it doesn't hurt to every once in a while do that, but whatever they can do on their own, I want them to do on their own. So if this is something they can do on their own, that's what I want them to do. But per, that's just my, anyways, that's why I gave it a, pay, a place for um, a for drawing, just drawing there. Just, they're showing us their listening comprehension, if they listen to the story, they're gonna draw it in and, and visually show us what they understood after we've already talked about it. 
So science, you could um, do, you know, the RC books, of course, also cover social studies subjects. So if it's a book that's been categorized as social studies, I just write, you know, social studies, history, whatever it is over here. And then they're done for the day, you guys. And that, wasn't that so, like, so uh, neat and clean? I didn't really do a math assignment with you. So at this age, I don't have my number stories book one. I'd probably be doing the book one. But you know, I just, this, this is just an open and go math series for me. And I just, we read the number stories, whatever's going on, then we do the little practices. And I just make up, you know, these up as we go. Cause I'm sitting there with them anyways, having him do it. But yeah, so just do your math lesson, lots of room, your reading lesson, cover your phonics do any copy work, right? Or it could just be handwriting practice. Maybe you just are having them practice their handwriting. And then you're like giving them feedback afterwards, whatever. Okay. So yeah, math, reading and phonics, copy work, spelling slash vocabulary, and do your read aloud or have them read it, whichever one they're doing, um, and do a comprehension illustration for you. Then it's back, then it's just the next day. You just put your bookmark in and you're back to the next day. Just follow the book list and keep going. Okay, um, I'm gonna make you the unofficial RC notebook level two next. Mm -hmm.